This is the Northwood Report on ESPNWestPalm.com, taking you through everything that is Seahawks sports. Now, here's Jeremy Marks Peltz. And this is the Northwood Report here on ESPNWestPalm.com, your exclusive look inside Northwood Seahawks athletics. Jeremy Marks Peltz and the jack-of-all-trades Chris Kendrick, who uh, is the Northwood Sports Information Director, as I found out yesterday, uh, for every single one of the varsity sports. It's a pretty impressive accomplishment. Uh, Chris does some broadcasting, and uh, Chris happens to be a major Boston Red Sox fan, yeah. so uh, I can imagine why you're chomping at the bit to get on air today. Yeah, it was, uh, it's was. it been, you know, an eventful uh, World Series. Uh, last night's game was terrific. I've enjoyed it. But, you know, now I'm excited to talk a little Northwood sports, but, uh, you know, I am fired up from that Red Sox win last night. Yeah, and, uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll close it out in Game 6. I'm a Mets fan, so I still have some beef with the uh, the Cardinals from 2006. Oh, going uh, back, huh? So, uh, yeah, going going way back in the archive. So uh, I'm good uh, adopting the, the Red Sox as my team here for uh, these next, uh, hopefully it's just next one game. But well, well, we'll allow you to join uh, for the next two, you. next one or two it. games, hopefully <laughs> one, but we'll see. Appreciate it. Um, but uh, there's plenty going on with Northwood. Uh, coming up in the next segment of the Northwood Report, uh, got a chance during uh, what was a really cool event that you and I were at, uh, college basketball, Palm Beach County Media Day at Palm Beach Atlantic. Uh, Northwood was there, one of uh, several schools in the area. Got a chance to catch up with Roly Massimino, the college basketball uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, so uh, we'll hear the conversation with Coach Massimino, also Courtney McDaniel, the women's basketball coach, and a couple of the men's players uh, also joining us, but um, you know, let's start off on the soccer fields, and we will get to basketball here in a few minutes. Uh, this soccer team, this women's soccer team, is an absolute machine. Undefeated regular season, number two in the nation. But as we found out, Chris, uh, it's already a challenge enough to go up against arch rival Embry Riddle once in the regular season. Now they get to do it again. Yeah, it's back-to-back seasons now. Um, the Sun Conference has established um, a regular season championship game with the North and South Division. In the last two years, Northwood has won the South Division, and Embry-Riddle has won the uh, North Division. So, again, we'll see the battle of these two teams um, next Wednesday, November 6th at 2 p.m. at Arrigo Baselio Field on the campus of Northwood. And it's going to be pretty much the biggest matchup in the NAIA maybe this year as you have a, a battle between what was top five teams before when Northwood was five and faced Embry-Riddle, who was the top team in the nation. Northwood took them down and really one of the best games I think I've ever been to. It was a real thrilling game. Northwood came back twice in the game, including scoring in the last two minutes of the game. And then in overtime, our senior, uh, Helen Linsky, who we spoke about before in the podcast, uh, has just buried this gorgeous uh, free kick from outside the box and uh, sent Northwood off with the win, their first win over a number one team. And, you know, they even had the pleasure of that number one team being their rival, Embry-Riddle. So a couple questions here, Chris. Uh, First, for those that are not familiar, that have not been kind of inside the Northwood-Embry-Riddle rivalry, how, how would you characterize it? Why is it such a great rivalry? Uh, it's just got that um, there the Sun Conference, you know, at the lower levels, you don't really have a lot of the the same competition. There's usually you know better teams in the conference, but the Sun Conference does have that consistency uh, with its competition. But Northwood and Embry Riddle do stand out um, above the rest just as far as uh, that competition level. We see it mostly in the basketball field, but over the last few years, we've seen that just transition into the soccer field as both these programs have just become dominant powers in the NAI and in the conference and. Going into this game, I've compared it to maybe down here, you know, college football is big. So SEC, maybe in LSU, Alabama. I consider it that where you have right. just that kind of big big matchup. Only with actual, like, points being scored. Yes, exactly. Well, you look at those games, you know, they're 6-2 to two or, you know, 6-3, to 9-6 games. And, you know, you might have one of those with these two teams. They're very high-powered uh, teams. But also they have some strong goaltending as well, which have, you know, kept a lot of teams off the scoreboard this year. And then when, when you look at the composition of this soccer roster, and it's year in and year out that the Lady Seahawks have a dominant team, um, there's a lot of names from Sweden and Denmark. Uh, how, does, how do the coaching staff recruit, and you know what's that pipeline like with, 
with those players from overseas. Yeah, you see the Northwood uh, squad, like you mentioned, mostly Swedes and a lot of um, English players as well. Coach Matt Dunn is from um, England uh, himself, so he's got those ties. He um, was a player for Northwood in the past in the uh, early 2000s, mid-2000s range. He was a key player for Northwood, along with his assistant coach, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, they were key for Northwood, but then they were able to take that passion for Northwood and utilize their knowledge overseas and their uh, network over there to bring over talent into the program and really help uh, this women's soccer program become such a dominant force. Chris Kendrick joining us. It is the Northwood Podcast, taking a look at Northwood Athletics. Uh, let's hit on volleyball here as they get towards the end of the season, have a game Friday, senior night coming up on Saturday. Uh, looks like a lot of hard luck losses for this volleyball team. How would you characterize the season overall? Uh, it's been a real learning experience for the girls. Uh, they're a young team. They only had uh, four players come back from last year's squad. We only have one uh, senior, Danielle Lampman, who will be recognized, like you said, on senior night against Palm Beach Atlantic on November 2nd. Uh, that's Saturday at 2 p.m. that game will be. So she'll get recognized for that. Um, but like we said, Jeremy, it's a lot of freshmen in this team, a lot of youth. So it was a big learning experience. They had to realize how the level of competition changes from high school to college, as well as how the competition enhances when you're playing in conference rather than just non-conference games. So it was a lot of learning, and I expect these girls to take what they've learned this year and really come out um, at the end of this year and moving into next year as a real, you know, a positive moving forward. Yeah, final home match uh, this Saturday, 2 p.m., senior night. Uh, against uh, rival Palm Beach Atlantic. All right, so like I mentioned, uh, we're going to have some basketball guests coming up in the next segment, so let's segue into that. Uh, The uh, practices, fall practice, if you will, continuing for the men's and women's basketball team. And Coach Coach Roly Massimino, um, who is a legend, is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, next month. Uh, I noticed watching my first full Northwood practice yesterday, Chris, uh, noticed the commitment to defense, the hustle, the energy, uh, all the staples of a Roly Massimino team. Yeah, I'm glad you had the pleasure to come out and uh, can enjoy uh, Coach Mass's enthusiasm because oh, yeah. even at his age, he still just brings it day in and day I out. Say, I, w- I wish it. 30, I could bring the enthusiasm that Roley brings. Yeah, I mean, his, his passion for the game is just something I've never seen, and it's a pleasure to be able to work with someone like him and just see his dedication to the game and his commitment to not only the program but to making sure student-athletes are successful on and off the court uh, has just been a pleasure for me. So as far as uh, the team looks, you know, hopefully these students can, you know, take the privilege of working with someone like Coach Massimino and take their game to the next level. Well, and this is a team that, you know, they've won NAIA championships before. uh, And last year, I think end of the year, ranked sixth, um, they got ten new players. I mean, the entire starting five is gone. um, And I think even, you know, if the coaching staff has an idea of who they're going to start, they probably don't have much of an idea other than maybe one or two players who's going to fill certain roles. So uh, my key question is, what should the expectations be for this Northwood team uh, over the year? I'm sure they're going to get a lot better as the season goes on, but what should the expectations be? I'm pretty sure Coach Massimino always has high expectations for his team as well as the coaching staff uh, for their players to perform well. The Seahawks were number two in the uh, Sun Conference preseason poll behind Embry-Riddle, uh, which was kind of expected. There they go again. Yeah, there's Embry-Riddle. Uh, they have some key players coming back, which, like we mentioned, Northwood lost uh, the ma- their starting five pretty much. So you got Jake uh, Lockhart coming back. I know you spoke with him at Media Day. You'll hear from him. So he's bringing that senior leadership. And then we have a lot of talented uh, transfer players. I know Chris Solomon will also be in the next segment. So he's got some talent to bring to the team as well. Um, So overall, it's just kind of making sure that they can harness um, that team chemistry. But also, I consider it an audition. You know, this team isn't decided. You have the option to show everyone what you're bringing to the table and set yourself into that starting lineup where it's been undecided, but you can put yourself in there if you're just solid day in, day out, and give the coaches what they want from practice. And we might as well take the opportunity for a little free plug here. Uh, ESPN West Palm, of course, your home for the Northwood Report. We are also your home for all Northwood men's home basketball games this year. Uh, Our broadcast schedule will start Clearwater Christian uh, which is a very special day for Roly Massimino, November 7th. The court will be dedicated to him, and uh, we'll be on the air for that. Uh, and I'll have the pleasure of doing the play-by-play on those games. Uh, and then this weekend, exhibition games for Northwood uh, at Fordham on Friday and then uh, at Penn State on Sunday. 
uh, always excited to see what you know the team is like, even in an exhibition setting, going up against big time competition like that. Yeah, it's always good, and it's a pleasure for these students to come and play, you know, at a lower level, but still have the experience to play in big time arenas. Uh, last year, they had the chance to go to Kentucky and Michigan State, who I consider two of the top programs in all of college basketball. And being able to just me personally sit courtside at Rupp Arena was, you know, one of the greatest experiences in my sports information career so far. Uh, so them being able to now go to Fordham and Penn State, uh, this will be a chance for them to see where they can, you know, battle against some of the top players who were, you know, recruited at those upper programs who think they have a higher game than maybe these kids in our level. So it's a chance for them to show off in front of a bigger crowd as well. And it's always good to get Northwood known on upper levels, you know, in Penn State and Fordham. New York will now have some people know about Northwood University, and having that known just helps us as a school and as a brand. And finally, as we wrap it up here on the first segment of the Northwood Report, Jeremy Marks Peltz, Chris Kendrick with you on ESPNWestPalm.com. Uh, women's basketball, Courtney McDaniel, who will join us coming up in a little bit, uh, has the Tennessee pedigree. So what's it been like seeing uh, her run practices here through the first couple weeks? And where's the women's team at? Uh, it's been really interesting seeing the transition uh, from Courtney or from Mark to Courtney as the coach, and I know the players have just really responded well to Courtney. Um, they, I see them in her office every day, you know, chatting with her, trying to get that extra knowledge that someone of her pedigree brings uh, to the program. So women's basketball now will have a Mercer exhibition game this week, so they'll be able to. They're heading up to Georgia, and like the men, will get a chance to play on an upper level and just see where they're at as a team and uh, just gauge their talents against them. And then they'll kick off the season opener Monday against Davenport, who's a big time NAI program. Uh, they were the championship runner up last year, so the girls will have a big test out of the gate. So it'll be a big learning experience for them and kind of you know see where they are early in the season. Uh, good stuff, Chris. Did we uh, hit on everything? I see pages and pages of notes. I think we, we got everything. everything. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, women's soccer, it's just what I'm all about right now. Women's soccer is it's, Northwood Embry Riddle. It's, no it's going to be huge. It's like fueling me. I can't wait for this game. <laughs> Embry Riddle played Thomas over the weekend, and people wanted Thomas to win, but, you know, I, would, I wanted to see Embry. I'd like to see the girls come here and just, you know, have that test. And. Like we mentioned, it's a big time, you know, LSU, um, Alabama type, but you also have two star players in Helen Linsky and Valerie Obita for Embry Riddle, who I think Obita scored 60 some goals in her career. Helen Linsky, 96 on her career. So she's trying to get that 100 goal mark. They do count this game and her goals in the tournament. So you might see Helen try to get some of those goals here against Embry Riddle. Yeah, she but, needs to stay at 96. Yeah, so what you need is the star power uh, of a matchup. And, you know, if everyone is hesitant to watch women's soccer, this is the game you want to come see. It's just going to have that star power, the rivalry. It's just going to be a tense and uh, an enjoyable matchup at Northwood uh, next Wednesday at 2 p.m. at Arrigo Baselio Field. Well, there you go. Seahawks.gonorthwood.com, of course, for all of your Northwood athletes. Athletics information, ESPNWestPalm.com, as we bring you the Northwood Report. And again, our first basketball broadcast will be Thursday, uh, November 7th, uh, as uh, Northwood dedicates the court to Roley Massimino. Good stuff, Chris. And, yeah, can uh, we uh, get our Twitter plugs in real quick? Yeah, yeah, go uh, I just it. want to remind everyone to follow Seahawk Athletics at, uh, on Twitter at NU Seahawks and like Northwood University Seahawks on Facebook. And you can go to Facebook.com slash NU Seahawks. And my shameless plug is follow me on Twitter at CKendrick86. Yeah, keep following and keep uh, driving those followers up. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always talking either Red Sox, Boston Sports, or Northwood. So yeah, that's a nice if you want to stay up to date <laughs> in those two sports, follow me on Twitter. All right, good stuff. Uh, Northwood Report uh, will come back, and you'll hear from Coach Roley Massimino and others. That's straight ahead right here on ESPNWestPalm.com. All right, joined by the head basketball coach at Northwood University and a college basketball Hall of Famer, Roley Massimino, uh, joining us here on the Northwood Report. So, Coach, let me start off before we get into the team. You know, we're taping this at uh, Palm Beach County Media Day. Something that you said that I thought was very interesting was, you know, lobbying for, you know, some of these schools, you know, a Lynn, a Palm Beach Atlantic, and FAU to create some sort of tournament or exhibition to play against each other. And I would think that that's something that 
it would be almost natural. Uh, but, but tell everybody why that's imp- why that's so important, and you know whether you think that's something that can can be done eventually. Well, I think it can be done for the mere fact that there are good basketball players in this area, and every school in the Palm Beach uh, area recruits very very good outside the uh, the area. So, and I think there's a lot of fans in Palm Beach County that love basketball and don't know enough about the schools that are involved. You know what I mean? Palm Beach Atlantic is very good. You have Lynn University, you have a new coach, and they're going to be very good. A new coach here at uh, Palm Beach. I mean, and we've been fairly successful, I think, over the years. So it's been, it would be a great thing to have a little bit of a tournament of some sort, but also have people know about our institutions. That's what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And Northwood's certainly one of those teams that's had a lot of success. Uh, Coach, you've had, I imagine you've been through everything. You've seen a lot of challenges. Coming in with 10 new players on the roster, where does that rank up in terms of some of your all-time challenges? Well, it's going to be probably one of my all-time challenges, but it's going to be a lot of fun because we have good kids, and that's what it's all about. I wouldn't be doing this if we didn't have good players and uh, good, fine, young gentlemen. And it's going to be a challenge. You know, it's, it's, it was recruiting before. Now it's developing a team. That's what it's all about. Coach Rolly Massimino joining us here in the Northwood Report. So, Coach was just talking to Jake Lockhart, and you've got Gerard, you've got Texas, a, a few seniors on this team. What are you looking for specifically from them uh, in, you know, filling in big shoes? Well, we're looking for them for leadership. We're looking for them to uh, come in and contribute. Uh, right now, Jake Lockhart is playing very, very well, and uh, he's assumed a big-time leadership role, which we're all very happy happy and proud of so I'm excited uh, for Jake and the new players have to get right into what we're trying to do what do you think has been the best thing that you've seen so far through a couple weeks of practice and, and the biggest thing that you guys need to work on? Well, we really needed to work on our rebounding skills. We're playing good defense, better. We're getting more aggressive as we go along, but not uh, where I'd like it to be at this period of time. Uh, you got a couple of exhibitions coming up, including Fordham and then Penn State. Uh, what What is the challenge? What's the number one thing that you get out of playing those type of schools, even in an exhibition? exhibition game setting? Oh, it's great. I mean, uh, we have the opportunity to play against some of the best teams in the country. Play in Michigan, play Michigan State, play in Kentucky, play in Miami, play in Florida. You know, that's what it's all about. That's why the kids come to our place, because they like the competition. They like being involved, going to New York, going to Philadelphia, play Villanova a couple of times. That's what we're really happy about. You know, it's that's the challenge that we like to... And we played very well against that. And finally, Coach, I'd be remiss not to ask about uh, the College Basketball Hall of Fame, which I believe next month, if I'm not mistaken, you're getting inducted. Uh, what is the words College Basketball Hall of Famer Roly Massimino mean to you? Well, it's a tremendous honor. Uh, you know, when you get to be my age, you get a few more honors. You know, the longer <laughs> you're in it. But, uh, no, it's it's a wonderful thing and uh, something I'm extremely proud of and will be uh, during my college career as a basketball coach, and uh, I, I think it's great. It's great for my family. It's because of the players we had, because of the assistant coaches that we had, that this all became to fruition. Coach, appreciate the time, and best of luck. Okay, Jeremy. Thank you. And we are joined here in the Northwood Report by the new women's basketball coach, Courtney McDaniel, joining us here. Um, coach, uh, first off, you know, give us uh, just kind of a snapshot of the first couple of weeks, uh, you know, as a head coach and at Northwood. Uh, you know, what, what's a day in the life of Courtney McDaniel been like? Uh, take, see the challenge take it head on and blow right through it I, that, that's what I've lived by and obviously that's what I try to instill in our girls we're going to face challenges um, and we've got to figure out a way to blow through it and, and come out on the better end of it so that's what I've been doing that's what I've been living by you know from Tennessee never been in this area moved down here a lot of things have happened since I've been down here and 
you know, I'm only going to grow from it if I take the positive approach and, and I become mentally tough since I'm stressing out to my girls and just blow right through it. So that's been my mindset every day. So you played for Pat Summit, um, you know, who needs no introduction. Uh, have you gone to her for advice? Do you, I mean, what, what's, what's that like in terms of your support system? I know that she, she's very, very busy, and I know that I will be seeking her sure. advice and things. And, you know, I, I lean on coaches like Coach Lockwood, who is there, and, and things like that. And other some of my teammates are on the D1 level coaching um, or, or even playing. I, I rely on all resources. Um, you know, I don't really, per se, bother Coach Summit a lot. Because because I feel like she did her part with every player. She has put in everything that she has and given it to us. And so it's our turn to give it back. And that's that's my focus. That's what I want to do with this team. Um, because I know all of them. If they had a chance to be coached by Pat Summit, they would do it. Sure. So so I I had that opportunity. I had that blessing. So now I'm I'm just trying every day to give it back to them. Just a little piece of me and a lot a lot of pieces of her. Sure. And, and let me then ask the question then from this standpoint, you know, being a player under Coach Summit and seeing firsthand why she was, you know, maybe the most successful coach in the history of the sport, is there something that sticks out that, that you said, hey, you know, if I were to be a coach, this is why Pat Summit is so great and this is what I maybe hope to, to you know, do when I'm a coach? Um, hey, she's, she's, she's the one that told me that I was going to make a great coach one day. So every day, that's my motivation. I, I hear her saying that. I put myself in that back in that conversation with her, and her looking at me and telling me I'm going to make a great coach one day. Like coming from someone like her, it's it's awesome. Um, so I just really, really stress to them the things that I learned and the things I took from that program and give it to them. Um, you know, like I told a previous interviewer, like I live by her definite dozen. That's that's how I, I live my life and. And that's one thing, if these girls don't take away anything, that's one thing I hope they leave this place with is her definite dozen. She's written books about it, and it works. Obviously, she's an example of it. So it works, and that's the one thing I want to leave with every player that I come across. And finally, as we're talking with Courtney McDaniel, new women's coach at Northwood, uh, Aaron Riley, a talented player. Um, what, how is she doing in terms of her health? What's the expectation that, that you have, you know, coaching her for the first time? I am pushing her to limits that I probably she hasn't even thought about tapping into. Um, she's a Tennessee girl, so we get along. Um, right now, she's, she's dealing with a little small calf injury, um, and it's, it's bad timing. But, but she's having to step outside, which, which, which makes our team grow because they don't have that leader on the floor punching them. She does a great job of being injured but staying involved with her teammates. Um, I'm looking for her to really get up and down the floor and and be better than she was previously. That's what I asked for her. I know her goal is to have the most successful season to date, and I want that for her, so I push her to that limit. Um, And hopefully that will take her overseas to play because that's her goal. But, you know, right now she's she's out right now with a little cash strain. Um, Probably won't be playing on Saturday, but be ready to go against Mercer. Um, you know, she is developing a lot of a lot of her weaknesses. Um, she's her mid range game is is getting better, and I'm requiring her to play a little bit away from the rim, um, which is difficult for her. But she is she is adjusting smoothly, and and very very excited to be there. And she is a great example of a captain, a leader, and a senior. Coach, appreciate it, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. All right, Jeremy Marks Peltz back with you and joined by Jake Lockhart, one of the seniors on the Northwood Seahawks basketball team as uh, we are here from Palm Beach County Basketball Media Day and getting ready for the start of the Northwood basketball season, some exhibitions next weekend and uh, excited to talk to Jake. So uh, first off, you know, you guys have been practicing for a couple weeks. You look like uh, you guys are in, in tip-top basketball shape. Uh, just characterize the first couple couple weeks of of practice and and how it's been so far well it's been quite interesting i mean over the past three years that i've been in northwood we've been very fortunate to have a a core group of men who and when i say men i mean men these are you know grown men usually in their late mid 20s (laughs) and uh, they're very mature and they've all been yeah and they've they've all known the program like the back of their hand um but recently with this new team it's been the complete opposite we have a bunch of young kids um you know, very lively, uh, very excitable, and very um, and, and and actually, one thing I'm happy about is that they're, they're very eager to learn. 
So um, we have a bunch of young kids who are, you know, who are doing as, who are working as hard as they can, and in my opinion, are doing quite well considering the circumstances. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's different because they're trying to learn the new system. There's, a, there's an entirely new, uh, new, a new coach there that everyone's trying to get used to. Um, so, you know, it's 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 different from the last couple of years. But I think that they're all adjusting quite well considering the circumstances. And it's an interesting thing that you say because there's you know ten new players on this team, uh, and it sounds like you know the the way that you answer that question, you're one of the men. Obviously, you're going to be one of the senior leaders, but you're one of the men. Have, have you found yourself you know kind of embracing that role? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I really like I really like having the young guys along and, and being able to teach them ropes. You know, I, I find it uh, I find it a bit of a challenge, but it's fun. You know. Um, uh, I just I try to hear what coach says after all of his years of experience. I try to try to take everything he says and then just try and echo it out to the children. <laughs> and uh, and they're doing quite well. I think they're learning they're learning pretty well. From a basketball standpoint, give me the best thing that you guys have done so far and the thing that you need the most work on uh, before you start exhibition play. I think the best thing would probably be our effort. As I said before, the, all the kids are very excited. Um, I really like the effort. I really like how hard we play. Uh, the things that we need to work on are more mental. You know, uh, the things we need to work on are, uh, you know, every single player on the court being completely in tune with what's going on. Not, you know, not doing their own free thing. You know, understanding that this is college basketball. And now we have a lot of freshmen, so they're transferring from high school. And they need to understand this is college basketball, and you can't just run around, you know, doing whatever you want. You really have to buy into the system. So that's probably the part where we need to work on most. But honestly, I believe that'll come with time. And wrap it up with Jake Lockhart. Uh, you have an interesting story. You're from Antigua. You've played on this team for three years. Um, tell everybody how you how you got into basketball, how you got to Northwood, and what your experiences with Coach Massimino uh, have been like. Uh, it's, it's quite a long story. I've, I've been very fortunate. I was born in Antigua, but I bounced around a lot. Um, I've been fortunate to grow up in six different countries, very you know, very different countries, Spain, England, Bahrain in the Middle East, um, obviously over here in America for a little while. Um, but I, uh, I went to high school in America. I went to high school in uh, two years in Detroit, uh, Detroit Country Day, and two years in, in Boca Raton down, in Florida, Andrews, down here right. in Florida, St. Andrews. Yeah, wonderful programs. Both schools are wonderful places. And then after I graduated high school, I, uh, I went to Morgan State in Baltimore because I wanted to play the highest level of basketball that I could. And at the time, um, you know, playing at a, at a Division One level is where I wanted to be. But then after a year at Morgan State, uh, you know, after a year with the, with the, with the culture of Baltimore and uh, and the weather, and there were, there's a whole bunch of negatives that I wasn't very happy with. So I decided to transfer down, and I thought, you know, coming and working under, under Coach Mass would be, you know, obviously his reputation precedes him, and he's a wonderful guy. Besides the basketball, he's a wonderful man, and it's a pleasure to play for him. So it wasn't wasn't that, that tough of a decision to go and, uh, you know, to go and, uh, and, and play for him. Jake, appreciate the time. Best of luck out no there. No problem. Thank you very much. Take care.